Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight. So we're going to start and uh, we're going to, as usual, check about the platform. So this is the platform. This is the class of tonight. For tonight, we don't have assigned any homework. So we just need to be on the class, which is good. Nice. And uh, well, as usual, we're going to check the attendance. So let me get there. Let's see. Okay, Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Liliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Sorry, teacher. Can you listen to me? Yeah. Okay. My, my internet is giving some problem, but sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Sorry. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Luis Albert Steve Bonilla Canales. Present teacher. Good. Good evening. Good evening. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. Oh, he comes in. Okay. Very well, so we're going Sorry, to... Teacher. I'm here too. Ah, okay, perfect. Well, so... Nice. Thanks, teacher. Juan Miguel here. Perfect, also. perfect. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Uh, and yeah, I have everybody. Perfect. So we're going to start a class of tonight. We're going to start with a little video. This is kind of a different video than ones that that was. This is about business plan. And it's a uh, uh, well. It's a. Uh, uh, well, we are going to see. And then you are going to provide me any feedback, any comments on that one, right? So let's see how it goes. You're about to discover a little known shortcut to create a high quality business plan in eight hours or less. But let's start by discussing why you haven't finished your business plan already. Typically, there are three reasons why you haven't finished your plan. You don't have the time, you don't know what to write, and you don't know how to do the financials. And the worst part is, until you finish your business plan, you can't raise capital, you don't have a roadmap to grow your business. Basically, you're stuck. You can't grow your business. So your ideas just sit in your head, not doing you any good, and certainly not helping you accomplish your goals. But don't worry, because I'm about to reveal how to finish your plan in less than one-tenth the time it takes most people. But this presentation won't be online forever, so watch it now while it's still available. Now, the single biggest issue preventing entrepreneurs from completing their business plans is that they don't know what to include in their plans. In fact, most entrepreneurs think they need to include everything there conceivably is to know about their business in the plan. It's like an artist having 20 ideas in their mind and then trying to paint one painting. The result will be a huge mess. So the key is understanding what you need to include in your business plan and what not to include. The fact is there are only 10 critical questions that you absolutely must answer in your business plan. But before I reveal those critical questions, I want to make sure that you know that I know what I'm talking about because there are way too many companies and self-proclaimed experts online saying that they know how to create business plans. My name is Dave Levinsky. I'm a serial entrepreneur and I'm the president of GrowThink. Since 1999, more than 500,000 entrepreneurs have used GrowThink's training materials to start and grow their businesses. We've written business plans for over 4,000 entrepreneurs and these clients have gone on to achieve pretty amazing success. Our clients have raised over $2.5 billion in capital. Our clients have generated billions of dollars in revenues. 
and our clients have achieved massive wealth for themselves and their families, and many of our clients now have net worths exceeding $100 million. And perhaps more importantly, the industry knows us and considers us to be the experts. We've been interviewed by every major media source, and Business Week has gone so far as to call me the business plan expert, which was really flattering. We have an A rating with the Better Business Bureau, and we've twice been named to the Inc. 5000 list of the fastest growing companies in America. So the bottom line is this, I know quite a bit about business plans, and I'm excited to show you some key things so that you can be more successful. So get a pen and paper because in the next few minutes, you're going to learn four of the key questions and information you absolutely must include in your business plan. The first thing that you must include in your business plan is a one line description of your company. Not a paragraph, not two lines, but one line that clearly summarizes what your company does. Because believe it or not, after reading the first page of most business plans, investors and lenders often fully don't understand what the company even does. The second area that you must cover in your business plan is your financial model. You must be able to show the expected revenues your company will generate, what your expenses will be, how much funding your company needs and when, and if you're raising capital, how lenders will be paid back and or investors will get a return on their investment. The third question that you must answer in your business plan is what are your risk mitigating milestones? Risk mitigating milestones are where the rubber meets the road and shows your action plan for success. A risk mitigating milestone is an event that when completed makes your company more likely to succeed. Let me give you an example. A new restaurant's milestones may include finding a location, getting the permits and licenses, building out the restaurant, hiring and training the staff, opening the restaurant, reaching $20,000 in monthly sales, and reaching $50,000 in monthly sales. As you can see, each time the restaurant achieves a milestone, the risk to the investor or lender decreases significantly. And by the time their business reaches the last milestone, it has virtually no risk of failure. So to reiterate, the third key question that you must answer in your business plan is what are your risk mitigating milestones? The fourth key question that you must answer in your business plan is why are you uniquely qualified to succeed? Maybe it's that your past experiences will allow you to run the business like no other. Or maybe you have a killer marketing plan that you developed. Or maybe you have a head start in competitors. There could be a host of reasons why you are qualified to succeed. So include them in your business plan, since this is the most important thing that readers care about, and most business plans don't include this information. To reiterate, the first four questions that you must answer in your business plan are, one, what is your one-line company description? Two, what does your financial model show? Three, what are your risk mitigating milestones? And four, why are you uniquely qualified to succeed? Now, I mentioned earlier that there are 10 key questions that you need to answer in your business plan. I don't have time to show you the other six questions right now, but later in this video, I'll show you how to get your hands on them. So let me get back to the bold promise that I made you at the beginning of this video. I told you I would give you a shortcut to allow you to complete your business plan in eight hours or less. Now, by revealing that there are only 10 key questions that you must answer in your business plan and letting you know that you can avoid all the other stuff, I've already cut the time needed for you to complete your business plan at least in half. But since most entrepreneurs need 100 hours to complete their business plans, even cutting your time in half means that you need 50 hours to complete your plan. That's just too long. You need to be spending your time executing on your business plan, not writing it. But before I tell you the shortcut and what you should do, let me tell you what you should not do. The first thing not to do is to use business plan software. With business plan software, you'll waste time installing it, learning how to use it, and answering useless questions. Worse yet, most software ignores at least half of the 10 critical questions. The other thing not to do is to use sample business plans. To begin, 99% of sample business plans were put together incorrectly. So if you follow them, you'll end up with a failing business plan. Also, when you follow a sample business plan, you can't possibly show or answer the most important question I told you about earlier, which is why are you uniquely qualified to succeed? Possibly you'll answer why the business whose plan you copied was unique, but not how your business is unique. So now that you know what not to do, let me tell you what you should do. You see, because there wasn't a good way for entrepreneurs like you to quickly and easily create a winning business plan, I dedicated myself to finding a solution. Remember, I'm an entrepreneur just like you. When I see a problem, I start searching for a solution. So I spent several years figuring out the perfect shortcut system to allow you to create the highest quality business plan in the least amount of time. And it wasn't easy, but I'm thrilled to say that I did it. And it's called GrowThink's Ultimate Business Plan Template. 
let me tell you exactly why my ultimate business plan template is perfect for you. To begin, the ultimate business plan template is delivered as a Microsoft Word and a Microsoft Excel document for both PC and Mac users. So you don't waste time installing and learning how to use software. A Microsoft Word document includes simple fill in the blank exercises that guide you through the key questions that your business plan must answer. So you complete your plan expertly in hours and not days, weeks, or months. Let me give you some examples. Remember how answering the question, why are you uniquely qualified to succeed is so important? Well, our template already includes several areas where you might be unique. You simply keep the ones that fit and delete the others. Remember the importance of your one-line company description? Well, the template gives you two fill-in-the-blank exercises that will give you an awesome one-line description, and the exercises take five minutes tops. And remember how important risk-mitigating milestones are? Our template has this set up too. All you need to do is follow our lead and type in your milestones and dates, and you're done with this critical task. And finally, remember the importance of your financial model? Well, this is another area where our template really shines. Our template includes a complete financial model in Microsoft Excel. All you need to do is simply type in some numbers, like the number of products or services you expect to sell and your salary, and our template automatically calculates your complete five-year financial projections. And if that's not cool enough, it automatically copies all your financial charts and graphs directly into the Microsoft Word document. So your entire business plan and financial model is included in one Word document that you can print or email. And remember the six other critical questions you must answer in your business plan? Well, my ultimate business plan template has you covered there too. For example, our template tells you how to identify your direct and indirect competitors so you can quickly and easily include the right information in your plan and not shoot yourself in the foot by defining competitors incorrectly. And our template already includes the 24 best marketing tactics for you to use to get all the customers you can handle. All you need to do is select and briefly describe the ones that you'll use. And Growthing's ultimate business plan template tells you exactly what to say about yourself and other team members in the management team section of your plan. And just in case you have any questions at any time, our business plan template comes with 365 days of free email support. So how's that for a shortcut? I've already done all the hard work for you. All you have to do is download the template, type in your answers to our simple questions, and you're done. And the results? You'll have a professional business plan for your business in no time. You'll have a plan with a great business strategy and a clear roadmap for success. You'll have a plan laid out using our unique formula that leads readers down the exact path you want, causing investors and lenders to line up to fund your business. And not only will your plan be in an investor-approved format, but it will excite them rather than bore them like most other business plans do. So how much would you expect to pay for something like this? A proven turnkey method for developing a winning business plan in eight hours and not a hundred hours or more. Well, before I tell you the price, I wanna share something else with you. If you've been struggling to finish your business plan and days, weeks, and months to see- Okay, I guess that is enough, right? <laughs> So the question, I mean, what do you think about this kind of videos or this kind of things that happens over the internet? Your opinion, uh, your microphone is yours. It's a, a good marketing plan. <laughs> yeah, because they, they, um, they explain to you a, what do you have to do in order to succeed? Yeah, uh, but they also uh, are telling you that all the things that you need to um, to do, for example, is uh, to download uh, the files and to fill the blanks and your business plan will be uh, complete in a couple of hours. Yeah, I, I think it's it's good, but um, but at the end, it's not uh, um, it's like a a base plan, yeah. So, uh, like we were talking yesterday, you have to be the enough flexible to um to move some things or to reorganize, no, to reorganize some things in order to 
to being successful in your in your walkthrough. Yeah, not uh, only uh, say with the with the business plan and okay, there is the business plan and and I have everything. No, you have to to listen to your clients to to your competitors and obviously kind of your heart or your mind, yeah, in order to give uh, uh, the best things uh, from you uh, to your business. They were talking about four, uh, four topics or four uh, questions, not questions, maybe tips, yeah? Your business plan or your business in general must be described in in one line list, yeah. In order to uh, the person who reads uh, your business plan knows quickly what do you want to uh, to explain or to to do with your business, yeah. What is your financial model? Uh, your risk mitigating milestones and uh, for me, the number four was important, so important. Uh, why are you uniquely qualified to succeed? Yeah. Uh, I think there is a there is a question inside this question. Um, what is the thing that makes you that make you uh unique among uh, uh, a huge quantity of competitors, yeah? And obviously one of them is that you have to be qualified to do the your business, yeah? But uh, obviously if you are not the best, uh, you can have the financial model, uh, the um, um, and many other things. But but if you are not qualified or qualified at at min at minimum, uh, maybe you won't succeed. Yeah, that's my opinion about the video. Okay, very good, perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, any other opinion? Any other comments on the video? I, I think teacher is a, a for a beginner. It's not for experts. It's for the people that, that get overwhelmed. It, 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 many things to do and uh, simplify. Do the main things. Do the important things. And the, the important is start. Start. Write it. Write it. Improve it. Yeah. Don't pay attention to many things. Don't copy, don't imitate, don't download another sample. Do it in answer the this guy, these specific questions, and you will start in the, in the process. You you will be better doing the plan, and, and then you don't need this guy, but it's for the beginning, for, for the People like us, maybe that don't don't have experience doing business plan. I think I, I don't know the other guy, but I, I think we don't have experience doing a business plan, and is is for us for us to start to start to to don't procrastinate and start doing something about that. Very good, perfect. So, uh, yeah, definitely uh, the. The video was aimed to people who don't have any experience on this kind of business, right? So, and that's why they are, it's like a market for them. Man. Very good. Any other opinion? Any other comments on Teacher, the video? I need to restart my device because my camera is not working. Okay. And uh, I, mean, I will listen, but I can speak. <laughs> All right. Sorry. No of course. Okay. Any other comments or opinion here on the video? Well, in my case, teacher, I guess that when you have a business plan, maybe you can know uh, from where the, the profit is coming. 
And also, I guess that you have to, to know where are the ways that you can maybe lose the money also. Um, I guess that is the best is is the best is the best option to have a a, a plan or something like that that maybe you can uh, maybe you can uh, uh, have the knowledge and uh, what you have what you can do if something happen maybe that is the 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 main uh, reason why you create a plan, I guess. Because if you have a plan, maybe you have an option A, you have an option B. If something happened, uh, I can uh, follow these steps to to continue earning more money or have a, a different profit or something like that. Okay, very good. So yeah, definitely. The, there are many reasons why we need to create like a business plan, right? So it's a very important thing because we need to to present to different kind of audiences and definitely it's going to help you identifying the way that you are going to do things i mean a lot of things that may be doing on this one um about the video uh, to be honest with you in my opinion yeah i believe that they are not that good i mean yes they provide you some information that is true and they tell you important things so for example the first five questions that they provided was very interesting very good um i really kind of hate these kind of videos because they they want to sell to you right but they they launch like come here and, and you are going to find what you're looking for i mean sometimes you really need to do something you really need to create in this case for example a business plan because your boss tells you hey you're going to make the business plan and you say oh my goodness i'm going to go ahead and check and then if you find this kind of videos that yeah they provide you some information but i mean they don't give you all the information they tell you come and buy my products and things that oh my goodness i mean um i would i i believe in my opinion of course that is better for them to say at the very beginning, okay, pay for this and I'm going to give you everything, right? Um, it's like, I don't know. It's like when they show you the big, nice hamburger on uh, McDonald's, right? And when you go and buy it, like, what is this, right? So I don't like that one. Whenever, you know, whenever I listen to somebody speaking like this in a video, you know, this is whatever, I stop it. I know that that is going to happen. They are going to tell you, it's very easy, right? You just need to pay only this one because, oh my goodness, buy, right? So it's better for me, in my opinion, that people tell you, okay, we have everything that you need, pay this, and if you want, we're here. If you don't want, that's fine. Uh, you decide if you pay or you decide if you continue researching by yourself. So, uh, but the, the part that is interesting is that one, that they throw at you things that actually you are looking for so yes there are things that you say oh that is interesting i need that one i want that thing right and uh, uh well it's, it's kind of it's kind of difficult i mean uh, at least in my opinion right uh, almost always i stop those videos it's like it's not for me okay uh you are trying to fool me i don't know that's the way i feel it you are trying to to get my money and you are not being honest or something like that uh, well, I, I don't know what you think about that. Ninety-seven dollars, teacher. Ah, uh, you saw that one already. Seven dollars. Yeah, seven dollars is not that bad in mind. I mean, if I really want to make something and the template is very good, I can pay seven dollars. But I cannot spend twenty minutes watching the video. So, if you compare with the mother's love, it has no cost. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. So yeah, uh, I, I think I think teacher that the thing that you were talking about that uh, it, it's a uh, it's an important thing because there are many people who sells you who sell you uh smoke yeah smoke sellers yeah okay I have the best thing in the world I have the the goal that it the most brilliant. But at the end, you buy something and you realize that you have, that, that you maybe are not satisfied 
with the things that you buy you with with the things that you bought before yeah but uh <laughs> it's all about the uh, marketing strategy yeah talking about the product and give the people that hook yeah and if the people get hooked obviously they could uh, buy from from your business yeah mm -hmm. yeah definitely so that is true i mean and you say something very true i mean they try to sell you smart something that it's not what they are telling you it is, right? So, and that's what I feel when I, I mean, I believe that for everybody, you have received emails that say, you know, I'm in South Africa and I have $2 million and I don't know what to, okay, goodbye, right? So I know this is not for, for sure. Or people that they, I mean, there are people that they type to you a message then in Facebook, for example, hey, do you know anything about, I don't know, crypto coins or do you know how to do this and this other thing and it's interesting i mean yeah I, if, if they uh, the approach is different maybe i will listen to them but i mean uh, that kind of approach is, is not good and, and you're right it's a very common strategy it's a marketing strategy and it's a valid one i mean i believe that everybody has the right to, to do whatever they want the problem is that also there are in the past many companies that they are working for example in that scheme that is the pyramid scheme right so uh, they tell you you are going to have a thousand dollars if you invest a hundred dollars uh, what about that one and you say uh, tell me more about that one and th when they tell you the story i mean yeah you are going to invest only a hundred dollars and bring other 10 people I mean, but if I bring other 10 people, they, the other people are going to give me my thousand dollars, right? And they have to bring other 10 people, each other. I mean, that is kind of not good, right? Um, so that's probably what I, I, I don't like that kind of thing is because I linked that idea to, to this pyramid things that are false, that are, I mean, it's, it's not good for me, but probably, probably they are good. I mean, as, I, I didn't get actually to the price, to be honest with you. I was checking on that one, and whenever they say the price is not a good buy, right? So, um, but probably, I mean, the product is good. I mean, sometimes it happens. Uh, but the thing is that the marketing strategy is not for everybody. So, um, whenever you are creating a product, you have to think about that one as well, right? What kind of strategy you are going to use so you can get the people that you need for your business, right? yeah so so it's very interesting so i i don't fall for that one uh, you know a lot of people have approach on that one there was a guy that he would say that there was a company selling gold gold i said really yeah you just need to invest five hundred dollars oh, okay goodbye right so that's not for me uh and i mean there are other people that they they fall for that one i had a friend that he sold his motor, motorcycle so he can get into the business. And he get all of the friends together and they launched that one thing. We listened to that one because I respect my friend. It was just for you to buy coffee, you know, coffee, $100 for six bucks of coffee. And then you have to bring other 10 people. And he sold his, his motorbike, I don't know. At the end, I mean, we everybody would say that this is not true, right? And we were thinking how our friend had fallen into that one. I don't know what happened. And several months after that one, I asked, hey, what happened with our business? No, it was not true. He said, uh, I knew that one, but anyways. <laughs> it's so that, sad for that people. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and, I mean, if you see the news, uh, there are people that they commit fraud. Uh, recently, there were some people that they were selling uh, vacations in yeah. Peru or something like that one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I saw I saw them uh, today. Uh, yeah, I mean, what I believe, what I believe is that, of course, they know that this is going to be a lie. Uh, and they present you a price that is very cheap. So, uh, and mm -hmm. you say, mm, that is a good thing. And you get the reservation and something like that. 
but I mean, whenever I see something that is very cheap, uh, I don't know. It's like I don't know, Rick. Exactly, that's what I was going to say. I don't know. Rick. It seems that this is not true, right? It's, it's false. So the same. I, I mean, I I buy a lot of things over uh, Facebook or internet, uh, but whenever that happens, I, once I was going to buy a computer. And they were selling very nice computer with very nice characteristics for four hundred dollars. And I said, oh, "Tell me more about that." One. And they say, "Okay, you have to pay in advance, and then I'm going to send you the computer." Uh, no, my friend, I I, really didn't, I don't have a, a bank account. Why don't you bring me the computer and I pay to you? I mean, I really yeah. wanted to buy. It. And they said, "No, we don't work that way." Goodbye. Mm -hmm. that, that is not true, right? TVs. Um, lots of things, lots of things. So we need to be very careful, very careful because, I mean, yes, you can find lots of information, lots of valuable things, but also you can find lots of trash, lots of people that are trying to get advantage of you and get money just for nothing, right? Let's be careful on that one. Of course, we can research, we can give it a shot uh, sometimes. I mean, if the money is not that much, I mean, for example, this one, $7. Yeah, I can I can give it a try if they tell me from the very beginning. That would be good, good. So that was kind of interesting because it's in the book. I mean, you can find the link here in the book. And I was wondering why they, why do they put this kind of link? I, I wanted, what was your opinion? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I brought you something very good and very interesting today. Uh, it's not this. This is the same thing. Oh, is this. Okay, I know that, you know, that very soon you are going to, you are going to have a certification, right? You are going to uh, make a test. And this is a free test that you can do for practicing. We're going to do one today. And the other ones, if you want to do it, I will send you the link uh, on the uh, WhatsApp group if you want. So. This is a very nice, and it's for free. That is very, very important. So if you click on that little thing, okay, uh, you can actually find uh, instructions for uh, this test in many languages. We can see that you can have there in Chinese, in Japanese, and uh, Korean, Italian, uh, many, many. Of course, we're going to do it in English. We click OK. You enter your credit card. Ah, that is not true. Okay, and here is the way that we're going to navigate. So, yeah, continue, go back, go next, skip the next section, help, yes, no, uh, turn immediately, feature on, off, additional characters, or play recording. And uh, what I can see here, let me just check. Yeah, then here we just click next. And... Uh, it says here, if you have a previous test, but we don't have any, okay? So we move on on that one. And here is going to be the one. So it says, welcome to Dialang. And there are the instructions. So welcome to the online diagnostic language testing system. I will help you to discover how good you are in reading, listening, writing, vocabulary, grammar. Ah, this is a very complex thing. And how you can improve. It will also help you to assess and understand your own language ability. Uh, the dialogue system consists of several stages. Click on the image below to find uh, what stage is about. Press the forward button or go to the first. So let's check the first one. It says choose a test. The first thing you do, uh, you need to do is to choose a test. And combination of language skills and from the words that are available. The first one, I believe that, let me just check something here. Um, if I go here, yeah, self-assessment, this is placement test, this is choose a test, uh, self-assessment, and this is language test, and this is fit. So we're gonna choose, uh, let's say the placement test. Yeah, the placement test, that's a good one, let me see. No, this one. Okay, so here we go. Okay, uh, it's a diagnostic text. Is uh, the main purpose is to inform language learners about their level 
and about language learning. That language should not be used for certification purposes. Uh, and says that line is that diagnosis. So it's the same. I mean, this is for you to check about your level of English and uh, it's not a full certification, right? So you click OK here and here is it. The, the good thing here, I mean, if you want to learn another another language in the future, is that you can actually um, test any language. I mean, yeah, you can do Spanish. I, I hope you don't fail Spanish, right? You can take Spanish and uh, Irish. I mean, Irish is different from English, right? So they have certain specific, specific way of speaking. German, Danish, Dutch, Norwegian, Portuguese, and things like that one. Of course, we're going to take the English one. And here we have listening, we have writing, we have uh, reading, we have structures, and we have vocabulary. So let's take the English one. Uh, let's take first the listening, okay? And they ask you, are you sure? And you say, yes. And here we uh, have all the instructions. So let's work on that together and let's see how it goes. William, could you please help me reading the instructions for the placement test? Placement test. This test is used to estimate the size of your vocabulary in the test language. Uh, it is used to determine which test items to present to you subsequently for an assessment of your language level. In the test, you will be presented with a collection of words, some of which are real and some of which are invented. All the words are verbs, for example, to speak, to run, to eat, and so on. For each word, you must press the yes button if you think the word exists. If you think it is an invented word, press the no button. You don't have to take the placement test, and you may abandon in part way through, but if you do abandon it, you may later Later, get a test which is too hard or too easy. Therefore, we strongly advise you to finish the test. Of course, let's go to the next one. And this is the one that it says, uh, yes or no. Um, is a real verb or is not a real verb? <laughs> this is a good one. So let's work together. Let's see how it goes. The first one says to campaign. Yes or no? What do you think? Yes. 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 Okay. With three answers, we're going to move on, okay? Yes. So, yes, we, we check that one. The next one is yeah. to fight. Mm, no. No. I don't no. Know. Okay. Everybody, almost everybody says no. Uh, to verbal. Verbal. Mm. No. No. I don't know that well. No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe or there are some, some words that you don't know, or maybe it's invented. Uh -huh. <laughs> but what do you think? To verbal. We have one no. I don't know what the other people said. I don't know that word, but maybe it's an a technique for determine your level because maybe it's a season you don't know. That is it. That's that's why we are thinking about that one, right? So uh, at the end we need to choose one, yes or no. What do you think? For me, no. No, no. We have three no's, okay. Okay, the next one says to fear. Yes, yes. That's an easy one, right? To pray out. Pray, pray out. Mm. I think that no. 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 No, no. Okay, no. Then no. Very good. To study. Ha, that's an easy one. Yes. <laughs> yes. To stay down. Stay down. Mm. Yes. Yes. 
Low. No. I'm not sure. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, maybe. No. I don't what, know what is say no. down? I will search. Okay. No. no. Let's take no. Okay. Of course, you can look for them uh, later on, right? To compile. Okay. Yes. To yes. compile, yes. 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 Okay. To motivate. Yes. 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 To witness. Yes. 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 To emerge. Yes. 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 Okay. To sprinkle. Sprinkle. Yes. Yes. To yes. 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 We have three. Very yes. good. To alternate. Alternate. No. 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 To no. ski. To ski. Mm. No. No. Maybe no. No. All right. To unleash. Yes. 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 To hunch. Hunch. Mm. No. <laughs> Don't hunch me. I my No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, no, right. To name. Yes. 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 To organize. Yes. 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 To make. Made to. No. To make to. No. <laughs> to make to. No. <laughs> to make to. To make to. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> to type. Yes. 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 To wait. Yes. 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 To yield it. Yield. No. 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 Maybe no. No. <clears throat> to kinier. No. No. Maybe. No. 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 Okay. To stay. Yes. 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 To monadate. No. 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 No, okay, we have three. To the site. Actually, pronunciation has yes. to be the seat. Uh -huh. Yes. 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 One more. I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, I say no. No. We have two yes and one no. So how is it going to be? Yes or no? No. No. Okay. To mega lies. Mega lies. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. One yes and the other people? Yes. Yes. Okay. So Marco. Marco. Marco, Marco, remarkable. Mm. No, maybe. No. The rest of the people? Okay. Yes. Yes. Yes, okay. Okay, yes. To abolish. Yes. Okay. To root. Yes. 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 To distinguish. Yes. 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 One more. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. To outlate. 
Yes. 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 To sink. Yes. Yes. And the rest? Yes. 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 To encompass. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, and? Yes. All right, yes. To carry Shop. over. Mm, no. 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 To strength. Yes. Yes. Maybe yes. Yes. One more. Yes. Yes. To permit. Yes. 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 To promise. Yes. yes. To, no. to violate. Yes. 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 To dig in, dig in. No. 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 To numblate. No. No. I think no. No. Yes. No. Oh, we have three no and one yes. We're gonna go with no. To color. Yes. Yes. To waddle. No, no, maybe. No, no, no. All right. To box. Yes. 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 To authorize. Yes. 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 To commission. Yes. 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 To trace. Yes. yes. To judge. Yes. 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 To conceive. Yes. 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 To inherit. Yes. 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 Okay, we're almost done with this part. To review. Yes. 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 Okay. To celebrate. Yes. 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 To demolish. Yes. 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 To administer. Yes. 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 To erode. I've seen yes. Yes. yes? No? No. No. One more. No. No. To fabulation. Fab no. I think no. 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 Band. Okay. To join. Yes. 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 To settle. Yes. 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 To dribble. Dribble. I think yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. To mention. Yes. 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 Uh, yes. To yes. struggle. Yes. yes. Okay. To yell. Yes. 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 To complicate. Yes. yes. To squeeze. Yes. 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 To congratulate. Yes. 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 To keep sick. Yes. To yes, one no. The rest. Keep sick. I keep sick. <laughs> I think no. 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 Okay. No. no. To hesitate. Yes. 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 To compliment. Yes. Yes. Yep. To repair. Yes. yes. Okay. To reform. Yes. 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 To quote. Yes. 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 To address. Yes. No. Yes. 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 To waste. Yes. 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 To announce. To yes. announce. Yes. Yes. And to Amen. pronate. Mm, no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This thing, no. We have one and one. Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. Uh -huh. Are you guys sure? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're sure. Yes. Okay. 
728 okay. says. So we are here almost at the top. Okay, very good. So people who score at this level are typically advanced learner. Good, my friends. <laughs> With a very substantial vocabulary. Learners at this level are usually very functional and have little difficulty with reading. So they may be less good at listening. Ah, but we are going to check listening. Teacher, I have a doubt. Yep. Uh, so with the word authorized, I think that is with Z at the end, right? Uh, the thing is that in British English is going to be with S, uh, and okay. in American is with uh, with Z. So sometimes that happens. Okay, but both ways are correct. Both ways are correct. Well, well, actually, it depends. If you are mm -hmm. in the United States, they will tell you both ways are correct. If you are in England, oh. they are going to tell you no. With the other one, <laughs> it's not correct. Okay, just with S, right? Yeah. Just in, okay. English people, they are very, very strict about this kind of thing. Yes, yeah, I, I got that doubt. So when I saw the outer right with S, because I saw it with Z at the end. Yeah, that is true. So another example, that one is real life. You can have with a Z uh, yeah. with X. Uh -huh. But whenever you see that one, another word that was here, definitely was color. In color in English, from British English, is going to color. be with you, color. But in the yes. American English, it's color, right? Pronunciation is almost the same. Okay. Very good. Got it. Thanks. Nice. But we haven't finished. Uh -huh. Here comes the listening. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, we're going to read about the instructions. Uh, let's see who's going to read. Uh, Marcos, could you please help me reading the instructions on this one? Okay. Uh, self assessment listening. One on the next screen, you will be given as a self assessment questionnaire in which you are asked to make judgment about your abilities in the language and the skill which you have chosen to take a test in. You will be presented with a number of statements in no particular order, and you have to decide whether each one applies to you, to you or not. Press the yes button if it does, and the no button if it does not. The results of the questionnaire are used for two purposes. First, they have to determine the level of the test that you should give, be given, and second, they will be compared with your test results to see whether you have a realistic assessment of your level. If you do not attempt or complete the questionnaire, the information cannot be used to help choose which test to give you. Okay, nice. So let's jump into that one. Okay, so um, we're going to go one by one since we're going to practice reading as well, okay? Let's see. Um, uh, Steve Bonilla, could you please help me reading the first one? Okay, I can follow a speech which is very slow and carefully articulate with long pauses for me to get the meaning. Okay, everybody, everybody, we're going to do this part because in this way we're going to check what is the test that we're going to take. So, uh, so do you, everybody, follow speech which is very slow and carefully articulated sure. with long pauses for you to get the meaning? Yes or no? Yes. 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 Okay, then. After yes, maybe, maybe. Okay, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Very good. Dora Elizabeth, please read the next. I can understand question and instructions and follow short, simple directions. Okay. Follow uh, short, simple directions and understand questions. Yes or no? Yes. 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 Okay. So as you can see, we are going from the most basic to the other one. So let's see how it goes. Um, David, could you please read the next? I can understand enough to manage simple routine exchange without too much effort. Okay. So what do you yes. say? Yes or no? Yes. 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 Right. Good. 
Uh, the next one is going to be for uh, Roxana. I can generally identify the topic of discussion around me, which is conducted slowly and, and clearly. Okay, yes or no? Yes. 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 Of course. Okay, the next one is for Fernando Marvin. I can understand enough to be able to meet concrete needs in everyday life, provided speech is clear and slow. Okay, yes or no, everybody? I yes. say yes. 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 Okay. We are okay. very good. Yeah, nice. Uh, William, could you please have me reading the next? I can handle simple business in shops, post officers, offices, or plants. Okay, is that a yes or yes. no? Yes. Sim simple, yes. Okay, good. Uh, let's see, Juan Miguel, could you please read the next? Okay. I can generally follow the main points of extended discussion around me, provided the speech is clear and in the standard language. Yes. Yes, everybody yes. agree? Yes. Yes. All right. The next one is for Jose Wilfredo. I can follow clear. Every conversation to in our real life. Uh, are you able to read? Or maybe not. Okay, I guess not possible. Okay, uh, Fernando Ernesto Costa, please. Okay. I can follow clear speech in everyday conversation through in a real life situation. I will sometimes have to ask for repetition of particular words and phrases. Okay. Uh, for me, yes. Everybody agrees? Yes. Okay. 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 Uh, the next one is for Jose Osmin. Okay. I can understand a straightforward uh, factual information about common every, everyday or job related topics, identifying both general messages and specific in specific details, provide speech and clear and generally familiar accents if used. Okay, what do you say? Um, uh, I can say yes. Yeah, right. Yeah, I believe yes, yes as well. Okay. The next one is going to be for uh, Marcus. Uh, I can catch the main point of broadcast or familiar topic and topic of personal interest when the language is relatively slow and clear. Everybody? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes right. Yeah, you are a fan, so of course you can. So, uh, Francisco Eduardo, please read the next one. Not possible. Jarvin Sack. In future and here, sorry. Okay, go uh, ahead, please. I can understand a standard a spoken language, live on broadcast on both familiar and unfamiliar topic, normally encounter in, in personal, academic, or vocational life, only a stream of background noise, unclear a structure and or idiomatic usage causes some problems. Okay, what do you say into that one, everybody? Yes. Yes, I say yes. yes Content right. is difficult because there are idiomatic expression, but no, not always. Yeah, very good, perfect. All right, uh, now Jarvin, could you please read the next one? Okay, I can follow the essential of lectures, talks and reports and other forms of presentation which use complex ideas of language. What do you say, people? 
yes. It's in Jess. Yes. Okay, very good, nice. Uh, Giselle, is it possible for you? Hi, yes, it's sure. Oh, perfect. Okay. Can you read the next one? I can understand announcements and messages on concrete and abstract topics spoken in standard language at normal speed. Okay, everybody, what do you say? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, next one is going to be for, let's see, Steve Bonilla. Hello, Steve. Is it possible for you? Me? Uh, yes, please. I can. Okay. I can understand most radio documentaries and most other recorded or broadcast audio material delivered in a standard language and can identify the speaker's mood, tone, etc. Okay, yes. what do you say? Yes, right? <clears throat> <laughs> it's not not too easy. It's not really. It's not too easy. <laughs> it's not hey, easy, but I believe it. Yeah. Identify yeah. the speaker's mood, how the speakers feel. <laughs> yeah. He's sad. Yeah, he's yeah, happy. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> half and a half, teacher. Okay, let's say yes by now. Okay, so just to take the test. Uh, the next one is going to be for Roxana. I can keep up with um, animated conversation between native speakers. Okay, what do you say on that? So, <laughs> a little animated. A little. So, Depends. Depends. <laughs> when you go with um, native speaker. Like... So it says an animated conversation, meaning that you can speak with them and that's it, right? It's not that you understand everything, but that yeah. you can express everything the way that you want. But you are able to keep an, a, a conversation with somebody that only speaks uh, English. That is the question. So you decide. Sometimes. No. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes <Don't> not. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, so, so if you want, you can leave topic. it like that, okay? Uh, and the other ones, I will tell you what will be the other ones. So, I can follow most lectures, discussions, and debates with relative ease. What do you think about that? Lecture, yes. yes. Uh, discussion and debates. Maybe. Maybe, yes. yes. Maybe. No, yes. then. No, then. <laughs> Let's say yes. Okay, uh, let's continue. Dora, could you please help me read the next one? I have to difficult to understand any kind of spoken language, whether live or broadcast, delivered at fast 90 speed. For me, no. it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, it's difficult. Okay. Sometimes. No. no. When we drink Enough coffee? Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. Uh, the last one, William Alexander. I can follow a uh, specialist. <laughs> Teacher, can you scroll this? I am not able Sorry. because this is the top. Can you see here? Ah, okay. No, I can't. Okay, I will read that. I don't know if everybody can see Okay. That uh, check onto that one. It says I can follow specialized lectures and presentations which use a high degree of colloquialism, regional usage, or unfamiliar terminology. Uh, I've no. seen even even natives don't understand <laughs> what what they may idea something. <laughs> okay, let's click no in that one. Okay, but can you see that you are very advanced, right? So there are only three, let's say four notes. I can keep up with an animated conversation between native speakers. So that is the one that we need to work on, right? So uh, there are only four things that we cannot do according to your self-assessment, right? Um, the other one says I can follow most lectures, discussions, and debates with 
relative ease. I believe the lecture, yes. I believe yes. discussions and debates, that depends, right? That depends. Yeah. I mean, if you are seeing, for example, a debate of the United States from presidency, probably it's going to be kind of difficult because they use sort of terminology, right? So that's uh, depends. I have no difficulty in understanding any kind of any kind of, sense of spoken language, whether live or broadcast, delivered or fast native speech. I believe that is the one that we need to work, right? Fast native speech. That's why this Friday we're going to do this exercise that we're going to try to speak as a narrator of news, a presenter, a news presenter. Yeah, we're going to try to do that one. Uh, of course, I'm going to show you some videos before. So you give a uh, new, yeah, giving a piece of news, yeah, a piece, okay, yeah, and the last one definitely is the most difficult, right? I can follow specialized lectures and presentations which use a high degree of colloquialism, regional usage, or unfamiliar terminology. For example, if you are speaking about plants and fruit in English, uh, that is a difficult topic. If you can do that one, definitely you have a very good level of English. But the rest, yeah, you can do that one. So that is a very good thing. Yeah, sure. So, uh, it's, uh, sometimes it's difficult when you talk with Afro-Americans. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it's because there are, there use some, maybe it's, they speak, speak uh, quickly, uh, but sometimes they use I don't know if, if you maybe some expression or words that you can understand because the pronunciation or intonation is different that you expect from other person like Canadian, for example. I don't know. Maybe in the United States, they use a lot of the uh, uh, um, yeah. Colloquialism. Colloquialism. Uh, slang. Slang. Phrasal verse. Okay. Phrasal verse. And <clears throat> to, I don't know what is that. Um, idiomatic expressions. So maybe uh, there are some, uh, some idiomatic expressions similar to uh, Spanish or the meaning. But uh, there are others is some very different. If you yeah. translate uh, to Spanish, uh, word, yeah, word by word, uh, is a little different. The idea. You are so right, definitely. So it's not the same for you to speak from somebody with in Texas or uh, in New Hampshire or in New York. Even in New York, if you speak with somebody yeah. in Manhattan yeah, and in Brooklyn, is different countries is different <laughs> yeah. pronunciation, intonation, expressions. Uh, that, only uh, in the United States, you know, or if you uh, tell about uh, Canada or um, England or uh, Australia, Indian people, Australia. Or oh, Indian people is diff Indian is people difficult. Indian people, really difficult. <laughs> really difficult to understand. <laughs> <laughs> and they get yeah. angry if you don't understand, right? They are saying, who do go to go to go to? And you say, could you please repeat? Don't you understand anything? <laughs> could I mean... you speak more slowly, please? <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. That, that, but if you yeah. want to talk, if you want to talk like an Indian people, you have to to say a T instead of a D. No, yeah. A, to say a D instead of a T. Yeah. Yeah. For example, yeah. The, don't you understand or something like this? Yeah. But but it's really, really hard to to listen them, to listen and to understand at the same time. Yeah, it's really, really hard. Yeah, I mean, there are some people that definitely is, is I mean it's a challenge. Uh yeah, it's like the um yeah, the Afro-American people, they, they speak sometimes in a way that you say, oh, I'm sorry, will you please tell me that in a different way? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, it's, that happens, that happens. So English is marvelous, it's amazing. But yeah, whenever you travel to other countries, we need to research a little bit, right, and check what is going to happen. Okay, so this was like a, a check 
Okay, it was a check for you to check. do the actual, the actual um, test. So, okay. Steve, could you please help me reading this? Okay, you will now be giving a Talag language test in the language on skill which you have chosen. Answer the item or items on each screen before pressing the forward button to proceed to the next screen. You can you cannot go backward through the test. You will be providing with full feedback after the test. If you would like to receive immediate immediate feedback after each screen, click on the button below. You can switch the period and off during the test. Intermediate feedback. All right, let's see how it goes. Here comes the test. I mean, the other one was not the test. The other one was like, what do you think about you? This is the yeah. test. So let's see how it goes. All right, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to play the audio. Okay, we're going to listen and then answer the question. The, the question here is, when will the letter arrive in Australia? So, I'm going to play the audio, you pay attention, and then you tell me what is the uh, the answer. Mm, I'm going to listen to that one. I guess it's British English. If it's difficult, I can play it two, maximum three times. But I believe two oh. is good. I mean, two is not that many, and it's not that little. In the real test, in the TOEFL test, you are going to actually listen only once. Okay? If you don't get the answer, the, the, the indication says you only play the sound once. If you once. want only once, I believe that at the better. bottom of the of the purple score. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, okay. we can do it like that to see. So you need to pay attention. Okay. Here we go. Uh, hello, I'd like to send this to Australia, please. Okay, just pop it on the scales there. Thank you. So that's one eighty-seven. Okay, um, how long do you think it'll take to get there? Well, it should arrive within a week, I'd say, and uh, oh, there's good. a change. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye now. Bye. Uh -huh. <laughs> in over a week. Yes, a week. Okay, in over a week. In over. Well, in over a week. Yes, yep. in over a week. <laughs> Is that the one? Yes. Yep. Actually, yes. you can see here that I am not able to play it twice, right? So it's all going to yes. be only one. Only one. <laughs> okay. Okay. In over a week, everybody agrees, right? Right. All right. Yes, teacher. <laughs> Let's see the next one. Your answer in over a week. Uh, a uh, the correct answer was in less than less. A week. In less than a week. That you know, week. Uh, the key here is because the woman says within a week. Within a week is between yes. in the yes, middle one of the week. reason I, I was week. in doubt. Uh -huh. Within a week is in the same week, no more, because over a week is more than a week. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's move on. Okay. Uh, you guys ready? I'm going to play it. Uh, let's check the question first. What is the attitude? Look at this one. This is a good one. What is the attitude of Mr. Hayden? Passionate in this in his criticism of others' views, indifferent to the subject matter under discussion, defensive on his views and opinions, agrees with all sides, merely critical of the current situation. Ah, this is a good one. This is the one uh, this is one of those that uh, when you say that I can listen to that one and I can I can say what is the feeling of, of yes. the, of the, the mood. person, <laughs> the mood. Uh, so the let's mood. give it a shot. I mean, because in the TOEFL, they are not going to ask you which level you have, right? So let's let's do it. Are you guys ready? Here we go. Yes. Ready. And welcome to Wednesday morning discussion for today. 
and today's topic is tobacco advertising and we have two panelists with us today Mr Haddon from the Department for Health and Ms Sorrell from a well-known tobacco company and let's start with you Ms Sorrell um, how can your industry justify an activity which persuades young people to take up smoking? Well, well I deny in the strongest terms that we direct advertising at young people it's aimed uniquely at those who are old enough to smoke and those who are adults and, and able to make free choices well, I'm sure there are those people who um, would strongly disagree with you there. Um, some would say that tobacco advertising is specifically designed to appeal to young people. No, that's certainly not true. I mean, we operate in the same way as any other advertising, such as alcohol, for well, example. Oh, well, let's e leave alcohol out of the issue, ha shall we? Um, Mr Haddon, can I bring you in now? What, what line do yes, you take? Yes, certainly. Yes, well, I actually agree more with your earlier comment. And I, th I think these adverts are they're aimed at the more uh, vulnerable element in society. And uh, I'd, li I'd like to ask here and now that tobacco companies start behaving in a more respons responsible manner <clears throat> in their approach to this. Well, look, I'm, I must come in here, actually, mm. and say that tobacco companies are responsible and we resent this constant criticism, which we think is totally unjustified. Thank you, Rob. Defensive of his view and opinions. Did you say defensive on his view? Yes. Yeah. What about the other people? So maybe he's agree with all sides. Maybe defensive. Yeah, you defensive. 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 Okay, this is a difficult one. I know. I know. Yes. So the they most of you say defensive. defensive. Let's say defensive and let's see how it goes. -da 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 -da. Here comes the truth. Mm -hmm. So yeah, defensive yeah. was your answer and was uh, immediately critical. Yeah. 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 I wrong. believe that he was not defending. No, you don't say that one. He was like, I believe that they are not doing that one. And uh, maybe the other person, the woman was more defensive, right? The, the, the other was, person was passionate. <laughs> but, yeah. But Mr. Yeah. Haddon is so so. Huh? Yeah, he was like, I don't agree on that one. I believe that. So that was it. He was not that that hard. He was like, ah kind of criticism or something like that so that's why but i know this was a difficult one so let's go to the next number three it says what is the purpose of the monologue to provide the address of a sports shop to describe where to buy sports equipment to advertise a sale to persuade people to take up sports uh, uh, respecting the previous one Whenever they say we have two people here and we have and presented the woman that she was going to be like from the tobacco company, I knew. I knew that there were only two possible answers, two only. So that happens sometimes. When you, that's what I would like, and this is a good tip. I like you to, to read the questions if you have the chance, of course. Read the questions so whenever you listen, it's going to be easier for you. And identify certain things that, you are going to know what will be the, the option. So um, what is the purpose of the monologue? Are you guys ready? Or do you want to me to yes. read the question again or something? Oh, ready. OK, so let's see how it goes. And here's some news of bargains. Sports fans will be interested here. Tennis and badminton rackets are now on sale at a reduced price, in some cases up to 50% off. Training shoes for all different purposes, Jogging, squash, aerobics have also been reduced. 25 to 30 percent reduction on training shoes. Come along to our store in the high street while our stocks last. In the yeah. last two to advertise the same. Yeah, because number three. Is that promotion. To advertise. To advertise yeah. To advertise yeah. Everybody agrees on that. It's all same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see. Uh -huh. dun, 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 dun. Let's see. Nice. Everybody agrees? Finally. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> no, Your I mean, breath. the first one was, yeah, it was a mistake. The second one was difficult. This one was easier, right? So that's very good. So let's see about the next one. Okay, it says, what does the seller mean when he speaks the second time? He doesn't understand the customer. 
The customer should say how much she wants. The customer should say when she wants to buy the olives. The customer must pay for the olives. Let's see. Good morning, madam. So, which ones would you like? These? No, these ones, I think. All right. You better tell me when. You're the one who's paying for these olives. The second one, the customer you. should say how much. How much? How much you want. Okay, everybody agrees on this one, the second one. Um, the customer the must pay. Yeah, the, the last one. Yeah, I think it's the last must one. Must pay for the olives. Mm -hmm. The customer must pay for the olives. So we have like two or three people for the last one and one people for she'll say how much she wants. Any other comment? I agree with the last one, teacher. Last one. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Door number four, and here we go. Okay. okay. What's the customer should say how much he wants? So the other answer was correct. Very good. Mm. That's not a problem. Don't worry. I know that British English sometimes is kind of difficult. So let's move to the next one. Uh, in this one, it says, what does the woman think? A biscuit is substantial. A sandwich is not substantial. A dinner is more than substantial. A breakfast is not substantial. Of course, substantial is going to be there in the, in the audio. So let's see how it goes. I'm absolutely starving. I haven't had anything since breakfast. Oh dear. Well, how about getting a sandwich or something? No, I think I'll wait till dinner. I'd rather have something more substantial. I have a biscuit here anyway. Mm. Our biscuit is substantial. Yeah. Biscuit is substantial. Uh huh. Yeah. Yes. Everybody agrees on that? Uh, I see. She's offering a biscuit. In... In a, in a instead of a sandwich. Okay. Yeah, a sandwich is not substantial. Sandwich, Maybe. Uh -huh. Maybe. So you I, I, I didn't one. hear the word that is not substantial. I, he he already take breakfast and he asked for a sandwich. Uh, I, she I says think, that the I sandwich the is one. not substantial. A sandwich is not substantial. Okay, sandwich is not substantial. The problem with this one is that the woman doesn't say exactly this word, so she says something yes. and we need to understand what she means, yeah. right? Okay, so let's go with a sandwich is not substantial. Everybody agrees for this? Remember that this is just a tryout, right? Yes, right. teacher. A sandwich is not substantial. Uh -huh. Very good. Okay, it's correct. That is it. We yeah, the thing is that she trying. says, uh, the, the man says, uh, would you like a sandwich? And he, she says, no, no, uh, I will wait until dinner because dinner is, is going to be more than substantial. I mean, so the sandwich is not going to be enough for her. She prefers to wait because whenever she gets the dinner, then it's going to be substantial. Okay, so that would be nice. Very, very good. Let's see how it goes with the next one. What happened? The man arrived late for the appointment. The man arrived early. The man arrived on time, but Mr. Murphy is late. The man had no appointment. Ha, let's see how it goes. Hello, can I help you? Yes, please. I'm here to see Mr. Murphy. Take a seat. I'll get him for you. I'm afraid he's not in his office. Do you have an appointment? Yes, three o'clock, but... Ah, he must have thought you weren't coming. If you'd like to wait, I'll see if I can find him for you, but he may be busy. Or would you like to make another appointment? Oh, I'll wait a little while. Okay. 
This is a the man arrived on time, but Mr. But Mr. Murphy, Murphy is late. late. Yes. Yeah. yes. The third one. Yes. The third one. Everybody agrees. Yes. yes. Okay. Let's check into that one. Here we go. Okay. So, yeah, the man arrived late. And yes. the answer on this one, it was just one little word. When she says, uh, do you have an appointment? Yes. And he says the time. But, he says. When he says but, yeah. it's like, oh, I'm sorry, but I'm late. Only with that little but and the way that he says but. And then she says, oh, maybe he thought that you were coming. Right now, maybe he's busy, right? So the time passed. I mean, since you didn't come, he's doing something else. He's not there in the office. So imagine a little word sometimes makes a difference. But, and that's it. That's what, whenever I listen to that one, I say, I say to you, oh, this is the difficult one. Because I knew that it was just that little word. Okay. But this is just a tryout. Don't worry. Let's move on to the next one. Says, where does the conversation take place? During a chance meeting in the street? During a chance meeting in a pub? Among all small gathering or friends? Of course, you are not going to answer, listen to this one. You need to listen to the environment, right? On the street? In a pub? With friends. That is the key here. All right. Here we go. Hey, how are you? Great to see you. I'm delighted you came. Oh, how are you? You look fantastic. Oh, well, you know, all that sun. Yeah, you must be having a great time over there. Oh, yes, I am. I really love it, I must say. Can't see myself coming back, really. Really? Well, who knows? But not for the moment, anyway. So, uh, how long are you staying for? Oh, just a week. Listen, what are you having to drink? Maybe during, in a pub. During a chance meeting in a pub? In a yes. pub. Because yeah. it's talking okay. about take a drink. A pub. Yeah, I would like to have a drink, but anyway. So, let's see. Uh -huh. Okay, it says, among a small gathering of friends, because they're speaking together. This was a tricky one, and also, actually, I was thinking that it was in a pub, because what he says, or she says, actually, uh, because of the drink. I believe this is too much, it's too too difficult. Anyways, yeah, I would, I would choose in a pub as well. What is the patient going to eat tomorrow? A non-meat burger, a meat burger, a burger and vegetables, a burger and meat. This one, I believe, yes, you are going to find the answer there. So let's see how it goes. So what's the food like then? Oh, it's quite nice. So uh, what kind of thing can you choose from? Well, for lunch tomorrow, I've chosen a vegetarian round thing, you know. It's usually meat. But what do you mean a round thing? What, like a samosa or a pasty or something? No, the, the thing you keep in the freezer or a McDonald's. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. A no meat burger, a vegetarian. A no yeah. meat burger, the first one. Yes. 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 And Everybody agrees? Yep. Okay, so let's see. Very good, definitely. Very good. <laughs> yeah, this was also this was also tricky. I mean, she says a uh, round thing like like meat, and he says no, 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 the other thing, right? He he doesn't remember the, the name, so that was the key on this one. So in all the conversations, sometimes there are two, three words that are key for you to answer this kind of question. Let's check the other one. Uh, why can't the morning students go? Because the quiz is in the evening. Because the quiz is in the morning. The quiz is for up here. Students are not allowed in the pub. In the pub. Okay, yeah, of course. So, let's check into that one. Okay, uh, I've got one more announcement about the activity program. Um, on Wednesday night at 8 o'clock, we're going to have a pub quiz. Uh, downstairs in the pub across the road. Only au pairs? Can students who are not au pairs go too? Well, it... 
It's really for the au pairs because they can't join in the activities uh, with the morning students. Ah, uh, so we're not allowed to go. Well, let's just say that the pub is very small and we don't want 70 or 80 students in that little room downstairs. Okay, I understand. Okay, what do you think on this? Mm, the students, the morning students, uh, there are no chance. In the public, or it's only 70 spaces, so something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are no space in the pool. And maybe for that reason, it's not, not allowed. Not allowed. Mm, okay. Students are not allowed in the pub. Everybody agrees on that? Yes. 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 Okay. The students are not allowed in the pub. Very good. Let's move on. Ah, okay. The quiz is for our pairs. Actually, she says that. Uh, because she says, uh, why don't we do it? Uh, something like that. And she says, uh, because it's, uh, actually uh, the, the man asks, uh, it's going to be for everybody or just for our pairs? And she says, only for our pairs because there is not enough room. We don't want 17 students there together. And so the students are allowed, but they don't have room. They don't have space for all the students. So it's going to be only for our pairs. Our pairs, what is teacher? Something that's going to... Uh, difficulty for here or something like that? Uh, no, it's a kind of students so are going to be not not the ones that are interns or the ones that come from outside. Okay. Good. Next one. Why does the second speaker have to change her clothes? They are expensive and she might tear them. Uh, they are not the right color. They are not clean enough. They are not smart enough. Let's check out. Hurry up, Mandy. We're going to be late. Okay, just coming. Uh, will I do as I am? You're not going out like that, are you? Why not? Because it's not respectful, that's why. But they're black. They're also torn. I can see your knees. That's okay. I wash them. Go back upstairs and change this minute. We're going to a funeral, not a pop concert. Oh, All right. Mm, they are not in the right color. The right color. color. Okay, they are not the right color. Black. Yes. That's the one. Okay. Okay, yeah. they are not smart enough. In this case, it was kind of complicated. Actually, she says, uh, the, the girl says, but it's black. I mean, meaning that the, it yes. was the right color. But she says, uh, I mean, it seems, it seems, that the style is not good because they are going to a funeral. So since the style is the one that is not good, they are not smart enough. It fits because smart enough it means that uh, it's not going to match. It's not. It's not adequate for the occasion. Okay, next one eleven. What are these students talking about? A play they took part in, a film they saw on TV. A book they read, real life. Let's see. I was the farmer and the builder wanted to buy my land, but I wouldn't sell. Yeah, and I was the builder and I said I'd kill you if you didn't sell it to me. And uh, Federica was an ecologist who wanted to protect the farm from development. It was very exciting. Okay. A film they saw on TV. A film they saw on TV. And the other people, this one kind of difficult. I believe the accent is also kind of difficult, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, but what do you think? A film they saw on TV? Well, maybe. Maybe yes, or maybe real life. Real life. A book they read? No. A play they look part in? No. Maybe between a film they saw on TV or real life. Okay, film or real life. So which one do I choose? A film or real life? Real life. Real life. 
Let's take it away. Whatsoever. Uh, a play they took part in. Yeah, because they were speaking about uh, the uh, customs no. that they use and this one. So it's a, what, a play. Remember that a play is like in the theater, right? So that would be it. Good. What annoys the woman? Do you remember what is a noise? Yes. Something that uh, get mad. Yeah, something like that. So aggression against caravan drivers, the presence of caravans on the roads, or the lack of services the caravan drivers. Let's check. I'm sick and tired of all those caravans on the roads in summer. They cause hold-ups and they take more than twice the amount of road space that ordinary cars use. I think it's high time drivers of trail caravans start paying double road tax. Okay, what do you get in this? The second one, the presence of caravans on the roads. The presence, everybody agrees? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's check. Ah, this is good, very good. She was very angry and that they have double file on the streets. So, I mean, yeah, sometimes that happens. Okay, what is the news story about? The news, remember. Glass panels may have serious weaknesses. Modern glass cannot resist explosives. People are often injured when they crash against glass doors. So let's listen to it. Experts are investigating why glass panels in recently built office blocks and large stores are exploding, showering office workers and shoppers with splinters of glass. The British Council of Shopping Centres is making a report on the matter after large panels of toughened glass shattered spontaneously in at least seven big centres. The risk of injury is minimal because the glass tends to break into small pieces. So which one is it? It's difficult. Yeah. Because the, the glass resists, the glass breaking small parts, motor glass uh, breaking small parts. But uh, we can infer that, that the last one, because the modern glass are different. But uh, they didn't say that that specific phrase. Okay, so you take the last one. I see. Okay, what about the other people? I think the first one. The first one, panels may have serious weaknesses. We have one one, and the rest of the people. The first one. First one. Okay, let's check them. Okay, very good. Glass panels may have serious weaknesses. That was the one. Good. Okay, the next one says, what does the report say about changes at the BBC? They have led to envy and bad feeling among uh, disc jockeys. They must get many new listeners to the pop programmers, they might lead to the firing of older disc jockeys. So let's listen to it. Radio One, BBC's pop station, is going to be made more youth-oriented. Insiders believe that will mean the end for old-timers out of tune with the young. It is not yet clear what will happen to the mostly middle-aged disc jockeys. A BBC spokesman said the DJ's enthusiasm for the music they are playing is most important. Okay, which one is going to be there? The second one, the must get many new listeners to the pop programmers. They must get many listeners to other pop programs. What the other people think is, do you agree or is a different one? Yes, I agree. Okay. Agree. Very good. Let's check it out. Okay, they may lead to the firing of older disc jockeys. Well, that was the correct answer. 
this was a difficult one as well. Yeah, I guess the accent and some words that they use are kind of strange. British English is totally different. What does the report warn? Warn as in warning, do you remember? Burning yes. videotapes are dangerous. Video equipment can be dangerous to children. Videotapes burn fast in a fire. Let's check. A fire officer warned yesterday that videotapes stored on open shelves in the home could cause death in a fire. The warning came after the death of four-year-old Jason Williams and his grandmother. They died when flames and poisonous fumes swept through the living room of their cottage. Videotapes aren't a fire risk, but once they are in a fire, they make the effects much worse. Okay. The last. The last one. The last one. Videotapes burn fast in fire. Okay, videotapes burn fast in a fire. Let's check. Okay, uh, burning videotapes are dangerous. That was because, I mean, yeah, it's kind of similar, but it's not exactly the same. Two people die. Two people dying. I mean, that's yes. not good, right? <laughs> what does the report say about surgeons? Like doctors, right? They have started an active campaign against mocking. Many of them smoke even if they know it's not wise. They don't want to operate on those who continue heavy smoking. I see the second one. <laughs> <Sorry. Okay. laughs> Go ahead. All right, let's see. Let's see if that is the one. Surgeons at major hospitals are refusing to do heart operations on patients who will not give up smoking. The doctors argue that patients should be prepared to listen to medical advice and do what they can to help themselves. The third one, they don't want to operate on those yes, who continue heavy smoking. Yeah, the last one. The last one. Let's see one. if that is the one. Very good. That's the good one. Nice. Perfect. And uh, number 17, what is the British Transport Secretary planning to do? New motorways will be built at a fast pace. There will be a new electronic alarm system on the motorways. The free use of motorways in Britain will come to an end. Here we go. The Transport Secretary is planning to introduce a toll scheme for the British motorways. Motorists may have to pay up to £50 a year to use motorways. High-tech car tagging would be used in this toll scheme. Details of the plan are to be made known in a discussion document next week. Hey. The free use of motorways in Britain yes. will come to an end. They need to pay. Everybody agrees on this? Mm -hmm. yes. All right. Very good. That is it. This is something very important. I mean, they never use the word free. They say pay, and we know that that would be yes. the opposite of free, right? So yes. Good, good. Next one says, What is being advertised here? An aerosol, air cleaning equipment, a protective cream for the screen. Uh, let's see. Are you expecting a pretty tough summer this year? Hay fever sufferers can now go on the attack with a mountain breeze ionizer. Take the initiative and get rid of pollen before it attacks you. Use a mountain breeze ionizer in your home or in the office, and within seconds the air is cleaner. Plug in and breathe a sigh of relief. Air cleaning equipment. Air cleaning equipment. Everybody agrees? Agree. Yes, I agree. All right, let's check. Very good, nice. Now you, I guess that, that now you get the pace on the one. Very good. What is said about Andrew Henderson? He faces serious consequences because of illegally copied material. He accuses the university of the illegal use of computer software. He has broken into the computer files of a software company. 
Now let's listen to it. Andrew Henderson, a computer science student of University College London, could face prison if he doesn't come up with £4,000 plus costs. The luckless student is threatened with 20 days imprisonment after he was caught with illegal pirate computer software. The second, second. The second one, everybody agree? I, I think that uh, uh, Andrew Henderson was accused about doing a, a illegal software. Oh, okay, but so not... it to be the first one or the third one? I don't know which one. <laughs> <laughs> because he's talking about illegal software that yeah. he owned a great amount of money for illegal software. I think the uh, first one. The first one. Everybody mm -hmm. agrees on this? Yeah, because he is uh, faced the possibility of go to jail. Okay. I think the second. Maybe. The second. Hmm. So we have two and two. What other people say? Other people say nothing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> let's leave that one and let's see what happens. Okay. So this is just a tryout. Okay. Copy the material. Very oh. good. Yeah. And you are right. I mean, he in the in the second one he says he accuses, uh, but it's Accus not that one. Yeah. He is accused. Nice. Okay, number 20. What is said about uh, Sotheby's the auction's house? It failed to recognize the painting as Menendez and Lady Go Chipley. It has discovered at uh, Menendez beneath another. Unremakeable painting. It is setting up a Menendez exhibition together with an art dealer. Let's check. Bimbo was an unmentionable word around Sotheby's last week. The name, enjoyed by an obscure 17th century artist, has come back to haunt the auction house, which finds it has sold an old master painting for a fraction of its value. The painting of a basket of strawberries will be one of the goodies in an old master exhibition that opens at Agnews, a London dealer, tomorrow. This time it will carry a £275,000 price tag. Julian Agnew, the managing director, spotted it as a coveted work by Louis Menendez, an 18th century Spanish painter renowned for his still lives. So which one do you take? Maybe the second one because it was a pain about the strawberries and something like that. That was painted by Menendez. Okay, so the second one. So yes. it's like a painting. There are art dealer, but it was given an exhibition. Yeah. But the art dealer is not a painter. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Everybody agrees on this one, or do you have a different idea? I agree. I agree. Perfect. Let's check it, please. And uh -huh. it was it failed to recognize the painting as Menendez and Lady Go Shipley. Actually, it says uh, they uh, sold it for a fraction of the price. So yes, yeah, they listened that a fraction of the price. Yeah. So it means that they. Uh, let it go cheaply. So it was yeah. more expensive and they failed there. That's a big fail. Okay. What point is being made here about women travelers in the 19th century? They often combine traveling with research into native art. They sought increasingly remote destinations. They were often prevented from visiting unexplored territories. Let's listen to it. At the beginning of the 19th century, it was a question of where rather than whether the ladies would go. Around that time, the well-worn routes no longer satisfied the eager appetites of the lady traveller. As one woman put it, rides on horseback have now given way to rides on camelback or any back that can be had. Elizabeth Rigby, 
painter and art historian, affected fear that soon there would be no more places for the aspiring ladies to explore. As a solution to that, she suggests that there is a great deal of ladies' work still on hand in Africa, the Pacific, and Central America. This solution was to be more than adequately actualized in her own lifetime. And by the end of the century, there were few parts of the globe that remained unvisited by women determined to extend their horizons. Okay, which one do you take? The last one. The last one. They were often prevented from visiting unexplored territories. Everybody agrees? The second one? Second one. The second one. Okay. The second. Yes. They sought increasingly remote destinations. All right. Let's check. Very good. The second one was it. Nice. Let's check the next one. What change took place in the Peter family? They each took a second job to earn more money. They learned how to earn more for less work. They changed their whole lifestyle. Consumerism? Who needs it? Lynn Kidder had two jobs, computer programming and teaching the piano. She and her husband earned $2,700 a month, but they were too busy to be happy. Lynn wanted to play her piano, not teach it. So they took a course in voluntary simplicity. They learned how to cut their spending and enhance their savings. After four years of voluntary simplicity, they achieved crossover point. They gave up all their jobs and joined the new leisured class. Okay, which one would you take? I feel the third one. They changed the one. their whole style, lifestyle. I agree with David. Okay, they changed their whole lifestyle. Okay, anybody else's? I'm angry. Okay. All right. Let's see. Uh, very good. Nice. Very good. So, what is the contrast described? Family life versus work. The slavery of work versus freedom. Or fighting versus harmony. Probably this is going to be about freedom. So. Let's see how it goes. It is addiction that enslaves the bulk of the population during the best years of their lives. It demands large sums of money and rots the soul. It alienates people from their families, the natural world, and a meaningful existence. It is called work. Could you kick the habit? Short of biting the boss on the ankle, is there a way out of the elaborate maze that society has constructed to incarcerate the human spirit? A way that will divert your creative juices to something more harmonious and personally enriching? Nearly a third of working Americans have discovered such a solution. It is being hailed as one of the most significant trends of the 1990s, with profound implications for the nation's productivity. Its beauty is its simplicity. Like rollerblades, it could sweep Britain. It is known as downshifting. Okay, which one do you take? <laughs> <laughs> the three of them make sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At some point, the, she mentioned things, but well, uh, she clarifies on some other. Simplicity of life is the solution. I think maybe the second one. The second one, the slavery maybe. of war versus freedom. Everybody yes. agrees? I hear you. Sorry. Okay, let's see. Very good. That's the one. <laughs> this was a tricky one. Okay, what is the best word for the gap in the sentence below? Right in the box, the woman who is interviewed in a street gallop poll thinks the shops include should be, and that word, the one that is missing here, is the one that we're going to type there on Sundays. So once again, one word is the one that we need. The woman who is interviewed in the street uh, 
should Gallup poll think the shop should be on Sundays? Let's listen. Do you think shops should be open on Sundays? No way. What would be the point running about in the city center even on a Sunday? I really don't understand it. Isn't six days a week enough to buy what you need? This is another of these silly fads. <laughs> She'll be open. She'll be up, yeah. open. Open. Like this, right? Oops. Everybody agrees? Yes. No. No, huh? No. Class. Aha. Uh -huh. Should be closed. Close. Okay. Very good. That is it. There were many uh, possible, possible, but closed is one of those. And yeah, yeah. it should be open, she says, the questionnaire. No, she says. Oh. That would be it. Uh, will you hear a part of radio interview? What is Mr. Costner's view about British self-confidence? The British have a worryingly low self-confidence. It is quite impossible to comment on such a complex matter. The British have no problem with self-confidence. Self-confidence may appear both strong and weak. So let's check it out. Mr. Barry Costner is a well-known psychologist from Thames Valley University. Mr. Costner, do you think that the British have such low self-esteem as the media have claimed on the basis of a comparative study? The French and Americans seem to have greater confidence in themselves. Yes, well, I think we need to point out that this is not a simple matter, not a question that you can answer simply with yes or no. It is likely that the general attitude of the British people to other cultures suggests that self-confidence may be relatively low. But if one looks at the British scene more closely, there is also contrary evidence. Actually, it has also been argued that the British go about their lives without ever thinking of asking all the time what other nations think about us. Okay, which one is the answer? The self confidence apparent to be low, but it's the contrary. <laughs> that, okay. that was the coming of the psychologists. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And, and oh. It is the it is not easy to comment about that. It says, but it's apparently to be low, but it's totally the contrary. Okay. And I don't know. I, I see the last one. Self confidence. Okay. Very good. Uh, anybody uh, or the rest of the people, do you agree? I agree. Okay. Okay, let's check. Very yes. good. That's the one. Self confidence may appear both strong and weak. Strong. Uh, different points of view there. Yeah. Good. Okay, we're almost done. Since when have marches been played at church wedding? Since antiquity, since the 17th century, since the 19th century. We will know right now. Gary Bailey, you are a musician interested in the tradition of wedding marches, and you've done a lot of research on the topic. Can you say how long the tradition actually is? Okay, like most art forms, perhaps all art forms, Wedding march music has its origins in classical antiquity and astrology, in Greek tragedy and military marches. The tradition itself is, you know, actually much younger than those marches that were composed long ago. In the 17th century, it was popular in opera to move choruses about by playing marches, but the marches played in the church became common much later, about two centuries later, in fact. Okay, what is the answer? The second one. Second one. Yes, it, it, this is since antiquity. Mm -hmm. uh, antiquity. Since antiquity, but uh, in the 17th century, the church. Ah, okay, they came into the church. All right, so which one do I choose then? First one, <laughs> the second one. 
I don't know, because the music, the music, uh, uh, we listen in the wedding march, it's from 17th century, it's a Mendeleev march. Yeah. <laughs> it's not from antique. That uh, one, no. I don't know, maybe the first or the second one. The first. Cecil Stone and, and what? <laughs> Okay, paper, everybody. Paper, scissors, stuff. Yeah, well, we don't know. You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But I don't know if wedding was in the antique. The second one. The second one, right? Let's see. The yeah, second it's one. late. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, the, uh, it was the 17th century and it was in the 19th century. Uh, well, I don't know. I, I cannot tell you exactly Again. what happened there. <laughs> We're almost done. Three more. Two women are talking on the phone about the film they have seen. What was the film about? Unhappy Women Police, Human Relations, Growing Up to Be a Woman, Alcohol Abuse. Here we go. So, what did you think about the film? Don't know, really. Wasn't bad, actually. You didn't find it too boring? A bit, perhaps. They could have speeded up the story in some places. I couldn't quite understand how the woman went back to the man. Oh, she loved him, didn't she? Huh? It didn't look like it. The guy was beating her up, time after time. Come on. Yeah, but there are women like that, for real. Never want to believe that the man's really no good, no matter how often they beat you up. Well, honestly, I think she was weird. You can say that again. It takes all sorts. Okay. Which one is going to be? Growing, growing up. Growing out to be a... Okay, we have growing up to be a woman and human relations. Human so... relations. Human relations. We have two and two. One more. Just one more. Human relation. Human so. relations. Let's see if that is the one. That is the yeah. one. Definitely. Because, yeah, it's like uh, the man was hitting the woman and the woman always coming back. Uh, human relations. Okay, uh, what did Lewis Campbell Davidson consider the most important aspect of women's liberation in the late uh, 1800s? The right to manage their own financial affairs, more tolerant attitude towards sexual relationships, uh, the possibility of going everywhere they liked, better job opportunities both at home and abroad. Here we go. In 1889, Lelias Campbell Davidson points out that continental travel for women is now too common to excite remark. She adds triumphantly, Among the many and valuable advantages which have come to the sex from the more rational treatment they experience in these days at the hands of the world, none is more excellent than this. No liberation is more valued in itself and in its results than the power which has become the right of every woman of being a lady traveller. Hey, which one do you take? The second one. Second one, more tolerant attitudes towards sexual relationship. Yes. I see the third one's teaching. The third one, the possibility of going everywhere they like. And the rest of the people? Nothing at all. Okay, let's leave this one because as Marvin says, very late. Okay, that was the one. All right, good. And this is the last one, 21 and 30. That means that on the same audio, we're going to do two questions. 
What does Caroline say about her work as a dental assistant? She explains how she came to have the job. She explains what, why she finds it great fun. She explains why it's sometimes tedious. And on the other one, what does Caroline say about the job interview? It went well because her hobby aroused interest. It went so badly that she doubted she would ever get a job. It went quite well because she was able to control her nerves. Let's check. With us in the studio today is Caroline Jones. She talks to us about her job as a dental surgery assistant. Caroline, why teeth? What is so attractive about them? I know it isn't everybody's cup of tea looking in people's mouths. But ever since the age of 13, I have wanted to do something in dentistry. My aunt is a dentist, and she suggested that I try dental surgery assistant work because I didn't want to become a dentist. After my exams at 16, I didn't really want to stay on at school and saw an advert in the paper for a dental assistant at a local practice. You don't work in a private practice anymore, do you? No, I used to work in a private practice, but I now work for the Eastman Dental Hospital. The dentist I used to work for thought it might be a good idea if I applied at the hospital. I went for an interview, but I didn't think that it had gone particularly well. I always get nervous in that type of situation. One of the interviewers kept on interrupting me all the time. She seemed to be put off when I said that I rode a motorbike. Okay, for this one, what do you take? Uh, she explained how she came to have the job. First one. Everybody agrees? I agree. I think the, the last one, teach. sometimes it's tedious. Sometimes tedious. Mm -hmm. What do you think then? The first one. The first one. Okay. And uh, on this one, which one do you take? The second one. Second one. Everybody agrees? Oh, yeah. Yes, I agree. Okay, let's see. On the 29, yeah. She explained how she came to have the yeah. job. And on the 30th, also. Yeah, very good. Two. Okay. Uh, score and allow you to. Uh, okay, let's see. would like to see mm, okay what would you like to see your level not the answers right placement Sh test self-assessment feedback i believe the placement the test. level the level, level right b1. b1 okay b1 is like lower uh it's like intermediate of course in the listening there were a lot of problems because the pronunciation the intonation the everything was kind of difficult some words are also in British English different from the American English. And some situations also, they were difficult. So I believe, in my opinion, that you are here in B2. But uh, yeah, this is something like, like that one. B2, some of you maybe are in C1. So those are the two levels that some of you have, B2 and C1. Okay, But this was a very good experience, I mean. Actually, we're going to do some others maybe next week. Well, next week maybe not because we will have vacation, but uh, we're going to try to make some of those, okay? We need one with American accent. Yeah, you know, it's very difficult to find some of those. I'm going to try to find something like that. But the British are the ones that are pushing about the English. Uh, and the Americans are the ones that are charging. I mean, there are many, but you have to pay. So uh, that's not good, right? All right, let's check the um, attendance and then let's go uh, to bed. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Torres Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present. Good. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. 
Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present teacher. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present. Present. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Luis Albert Steven Isla Canales. Present teacher. Good. Jose Neibet Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Present. Good. And Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure. Have a great night. Rest very well and see you tomorrow. Good night. Good evening, everybody. Good evening.